Hey, it's Paul Hill from InstructorPaul.com, and in this lecture, you're going to be learning about group policy. Now, group policy is a tool that is used by systems administrators to quickly and easily make configuration changes to users and computers within Active Directory. I say easily because you can make one change in group policy and affect hundreds or thousands of workstations in your domain. With group policy, you can implement security configurations across your domain quickly and easily. You can do things like restrict certain users from logging into certain computers, allow only certain users to access certain files, give specific or all users a specific desktop background, or even deploy software to certain computers within your domain. Group policy is a must-have skill if you want to be a Windows Server or Systems Administrator, and so it's really important that you learn how to use this tool, and you're going to learn how to use group policy in this section. Now, one thing that you must keep in mind is that you cannot understand group policy without also understanding Active Directory users and computers. So if you've skipped over that section or you don't know how to use it, you may want to go back and learn Active Directory before proceeding on with this section. Now, group policy works by applying GPOs or group policy objects to the OU structure that you have created in Active Directory. A GPO contains separate configuration settings for both computers and for users. When a GPO is applied to an OU, the settings configured in the GPO are applied to the users and the computers that are within that OU. You can also configure the GPOs to only apply to certain objects by defining the security filtering. The most common default choice is the authenticated users group, which is basically any valid user or computer object within Active Directory. Don't worry as we'll cover more of the security filtering later. Now, GPOs are applied recursively, and this means that any setting that is applied to a parent OU or towards the domain will also apply to all sub OUs beneath the original OU that the GPO is applied to. So now let's go ahead and launch the Group Policy Management Console. In the top right corner of Server Manager, we're going to select Tools. And about halfway down, we're going to select Group Policy Management. Okay, so now the Group Policy Management Console will appear. Now, here I can see my forest for instructorpaul.com. What I'm going to do now is just click this arrow and expand this forest. Unless you've also created a domain called instructorpaul.com, you're going to see something different here. Just go ahead and expand your forest if you're following along. So now we're going to see domains. We'll see sites, group policy modeling, and group policy results. The domains folder contains all of the domains that are underneath our forest. The sites folder contains all of your sites that you may have configured through Active Directory sites and services. In short, this is used when you have servers that are physically located in different locations, like a different building, city, or even a different country. Group policy modeling and group policy results are both tools that can be used to troubleshoot any group policy issues that may arise while you're working with group policy objects. Now let's expand the domains folder here. And here we can see instructorpaul.com. I'm going to expand this domain. And from this view, we're going to see a similar view to that of Active Directory. Now note that you cannot see any of the Active Directory containers, like the users container, for example. But we can see the OUs that we have created and the default domain controllers OU. So if you remember, this was the only organizational unit that we had by default, and we created this instructor Paul OU and the disabled users, domain computers, and domain users OU. Now directly beneath the domain is the default domain policy. And what this message is saying is that we've selected a link to a group policy object, not a GPO itself. We'll cover more of this later. For now, just click OK. Now, as the name implies, this is a GPO that comes by default when a new domain is created. Since it is directly underneath my domain, it will be applied to all of the Active Directory objects beneath the root of the domain. So it's going to be applied to anything under domain controllers, anything under instructor Paul, including disabled users, domain computers, and domain users, as well as any objects that are directly beneath the instructorpaul.com domain. Now, this group policy object folder includes all of the GPOs that are inside of this domain, whether they are in use or not. If I click this little expand button, we can see here that the default domain policy is listed here. 
and the default domain controllers policy, which if I expand domain controllers, we can see that link is represented here. So when we got that message saying we have selected the link, not the GPO itself, that's because this GPO, default domain controllers policy, is linked to the domain controllers OU. And all that means is that this GPO is taking effect on this OU here. WMI filters allows you to add specific rules when a GPO should or should not be applied. For example, you could only apply a particular GPO if the computer is using the operating system of Windows 7 or newer. You can do things like that with the WMI filters. Now the starter GPOs folder is used when you want to import or export GPOs for distribution to other environments. All right, so now we have covered the basics of what group policy is and how to open the management console and a brief overview on what's inside of the console. So great job getting through this lecture. There's a whole lot more we have to learn on group policy, but I'm looking forward to teaching it to you in the next lectures.